All right, then we are all ready to continue our seminar. And our next presentation will be Brewster 372 and Hurricane Plains Restoration or Conservation. How do you how do you think uh, the real? But anyway, Harry Huopanen, conservator from Finnish Air Force Museum in Tikka Koski. So please welcome and, and you are free to start. Hello, everyone. I'm Harry Huopanen. I work as a conservator in Finnish Air Force Museum. And well, the Brewster, Brewster and Hurricane represent very different starting points and approaches than the Mursky project Janne just just talked about. Uh, as both of these planes were actually intact and they retained the high state of originality. I think many of you know already know that know that this Brewster was uh, searched and recovered by Russian, American, and Finnish uh, uh, group uh, in 1998, and after many, well, <laughs> many interesting turns, it eventually ended up to U.S. Naval Aviation Museum, where it was originally going, but well, <laughs> it took much longer than anticipated. And on the first picture, you can see how the plane looked like when it was recovered from a lake. So all the all the battle damage, all the crash landing damage uh, is prominently showing. And what is surprising was that the plane, although, although it was shot down in flames, uh, but the plane still remains in one piece and even the paint surface is intact and things like that. And on the right photo you see uh, how it looks today on our display hall. And well, uh, currently the plane is on, on long-term loan from US Naval Aviation Museum. Um, a plane arrived to America in 2004. And after four years, in January 9, uh, 2008, uh, the Americans borrowed the plane to Finland. And the first phase of conservation work was done in our museum uh, between January 2008 and February 2009, when the plane was put on display. And certain items were added by, by end of 2009. And the conservation work was begun by Americans. They had completed the conservation work of engine and rear fuselage section. And Americans shared our opinion that as this plane is a unique example and it retains a very high state of originality, that no attempt to make a complete restoration will not be made as we thought that it's more interesting and historically valuable as a, in its current time capsule condition. And the Brewster is a very uh, rare aircraft. It's only only example of its type still existing. And uh, globally, it's very rare to actually have a uh, warplane in museum that was shot down in actual combat and it shows all the all the damage it had received during its operational life and this plane also has a long and documented history combat history if i remember correct eight air victories were scored with this uh, bw372 and the Brewster was Finnish Air Force main fighter from 1941 to 1943, and Finnish pilots claimed plus 450 aerial victories with the type. And well, what we did, uh, as can be imagined, the disassembling and the cleaning of structure and components took a lot of, was very time consuming work, not very glorious work exactly, but 
but something that had to be done. And we made an exception on the bottom fuselage as this area still carried all the marks of operational use. And as the paint surface was intact, there was no corrosion damage uh, on metal surfaces. And well, after cleaning, we uh, protected internal structure and individual components with dinitrol and did a conservation of individual parts. No attempts were made to complete the systems to operational status, uh, but rather we, we used the original material we had and more, mostly, mostly used only, only the material that was originally fitted to the, this particular plane. Well, naturally, certain amount of sheet metal work and replacement of bolts and rivets and things like that was needed. And important wing bolts were replaced as they, as they had naturally suffered, suffered a lot of cor corrosion. Corrosion damage. You know, basically, it can be said that uh, area in front of cockpit uh, that was cover covered with oil and was buried in mud uh, showed surprisingly little corrosion damage. In many cases, it was possible simply to op open the bolts with no additional effort. Uh, but from co cockpit to rearwards and wings, they in these these areas, uh, the steel items were were corroded in varying levels. So a lot of a uh, lot of bolts, nuts and bolts were replaced with American material. Uh, certain rep replacement parts were were used in places where originals were lost or, or stolen, or in cases where they were so completely destroyed, destroyed that it was not possible to save them. Certain replica parts were made, and a naturally important step was to well, join the fuselage uh, for static display as the fuselage was cut behind, right behind the cockpit. And uh, well, every, as is usual, every step was documented by photos and written descriptions, and all the markings and uh, interesting details were documented by drawing through or, or otherwise. And here we see plane at Pensacola. Uh, in, during the first years, a lot of rumors circulated that the rear fuselage was roughly cut, cut by, well, axe or chainsaw or something like that. But pretty soon that turned out that this was situation was not so bad uh, as the cutting was done by drilling away the rivets properly and stringers were cut alternately from from the side of central section and tail section and this made repair work much easier especially as we were not <laughs> restoring the plane to a flying condition or even to look like it's in flying condition but uh, but it, rather to a level that it can be safely displayed without damage, damaging it further. And Americans had started the work. They had cleaned uh, the rear fuselage and engine section and engine bearer and all the uh, items in the engine like ma magnetos and uh, inertial starters and things like that. And in this photo of uh, rear fuselage section, you can see some of the dam damage caused by crash landing. The fuselage was ripped open when the plane hit hit the water, water rushed in, and a lot of uh, fuselage frames and uh, internal racks and things like that were were damaged. And here's the engine. Uh, conserved by Americans. Well, a lot of cleaning and corrosion removal and some sheet metal work. And what reference material we, we had? 
when I was making this presentation, I actually <laughs> realized that situation could have been much better. Well, we had finished modification bulletins somewhere useful. And also the individual papers of BW372 existed. We had copies of them. And there was a small amount of original drawings obtained by enthusiasts from Smithsonian. Uh, I've understood that uh, Smithsonian has a large collection of well, mo complete microfilm sets of drawings for different planes and things like that. But with Brewster, th this was not the case. The uh, drawings were stored, <laughs> stored in la large boxes and it was uh, difficult to access them and even more difficult to find something useful from there. And well, as was usual, we had incomplete erection and maintenance manual and naturally complete and very good quality example was found from, from Finland years after the project was finished. That would have been a very good, very useful <laughs> book for that project. Well, then we found a pilot manual for Royal Air Force version. Well, there were a lot of differences on equipment. Well, large pile of historical photos from Finnish Air Force archive. Some interior photos also included. And the importance of documentation is shown here as we didn't have any good photos of the plane available that were taken before it was disassembled. Disassembled and stripped down. First good photos we got were taken at Pensacola in 2004. And at, at that time, most of the equipment was already removed and the parts were labeled and listed. But in many cases, this list provided only very basic information of, <laughs> of these items like, well, aluminium support from cockpit and things like that. <clears throat> and here's the cockpit starting point. Naturally, we uh, the conservation work of cockpit took a lot of time as we considered this important and interesting area. Here we see the cockpit uh, stripped down. And well, a lot of dirt. dirt. Uh, I think the plane was covered with LPS or something similar substance pretty soon after recovery. And here we have see some work in progress sets. Uh, as you see, a lot of cleaning work was done. Certain conserved items have been re reinstalled. And we applied denitrol uh, to internal surfaces and on individual items. And the instrument panel shows uh, state of the uh, certain instruments, uh, the most prominently shown is the artificial horizon. It uh, instrument casing has mag uh, casing is made of magnesium alloy that has, well, uh, almost disappeared. So this kind of totally lost uh, or stolen items were replaced with correct type of instruments we found from our museum storages and originals were used whenever it was possible. And on the main instrument panel, you see, you can see the uh, airspeed indicator on the upper left corner and barometer on the right under the compass and the compass in upper right corner. At least these uh, instruments were found from museum storage as originals were destroyed or or lost. And here we see the cockpit finished. As you can see, we, did, we didn't attempt to create a cockpit with, uh, with fu fully opera operational look, but rather, we, as I said before, we, we used the items we had and, and in that way, well, 
it's not complete, but on the other hand, it, it retains very high state of originality. And uh, certain replica items were made, like dream knobs. You see them on the left, uh, left hand console uh, under the throttle. And uh, this kind of uh, decisions, additions were individual decisions and compromises. And every, re every installed non original part is an easily traceable item that can be safely remo removed without altering the original, original structure. And uh, well, because of these limitations, the uh, current state of cockpit doesn't re represent any accurate historical state, but is a synthesis of material and, and knowledge available at the time, time of conservation work. And the seat and seat belts, uh, uh, this is uh, an interesting detail. We decided to display them separately, and there were two reasons. First was the uh, badly corroded condition of uh, mounting frames. So we would have had to make an, uh, a lot of new parts if we would have wanted to properly install the engine like it originally was, um, see it like it originally was. And the second reason is the original battle damage and the shattered finish uh, armor plate. Uh, and the fact that the pilot actually survived unharmed, this very, very close call, is a very, well, important and interesting part of this plane's history, so we thought that it, it deserves to get highlighted a little bit. And, well, this heat that shattered the armor plate hit the with the plane's tail cone, came through about 10 aluminium plates and had turned sideways at the time when it hit, hit the pilot seat. And this armor plate was a Finnish addition made right after, after the winter war due to winter war experiences. Well, Finns observed exactly the same things as every other air forces at that time. When the World War II started, many fighters didn't have pilot armor, but after one year of World War II, most of the <laughs> most of the fighter planes were were armored. And seat belts, uh, we made an, made new parts, partly because we talked thought that this is an interesting detail, as this is a Finnish uh, modification. And here we see the original material. And these seat belts were recovered from the wreck of Fokker D21 FR137. This plane crashed fatally during a training mission on 19th May 1941, and pilot Taisto Hyvonen was killed. Uh, this wreck was uh, recovered from the uh, bottom of a lake uh, during 1980s when. Fokker D21 restoration project was going on. And actually this rear armor plate of this same plane was used on restoration of Mursky as original steel plate was missing. And these plates were finished standard, uh, standard items uh, that were used on most Finnish war planes with uh, as little modifications as possible. And this Fokker D21 belts were used as a pattern, and luckily we had enough original seat belt material and, and these metal parts from many other belts, so it was possible to uh, was possible to make make new ones from original material. And this spring-loaded troll is similar that was used on Brewster, so we installed this Fokker Fokker part part to BB372. And well, the replica parts, 
partial reason for this kind of uh, work was that we had a couple of modelers uh, working at the museum at that time, me included. And replica pitot tube head and trim knobs were cast from polyurethane resin. And this is uh, pretty easy and a quite accurate method on, on making replica parts in cases where you have original items for making molds or enough information to make accurate master masters. And this trim, uh, correct type of trim knobs were borrowed from Finnish fighter prototype Humu that was very much based on Brewster. And correct pitot type head was found from for credit 21. And well, on the left photo, we're making making the molds with high tech methods. As you see, the Lego blocks were were creatively used. And yes, there were two reasons with trim with trim knobs. The reason for replica parts was that uh, those. Uh, place, planes were destroyed, uh, parts were destroyed by corrosion and Peter tube head was probably simply stolen as it's nice looking shiny part. Uh, and the fuselage joint. Uh, and this is the damage suffered during landing. Cost some additional work and naturally when the plane was disassembled in 1998, uh, and it was six years located on, on many places. Well, that didn't help the situation. Some more damage uh, was caused at that time. And, and you, you can see there's some damage on fuselage frames, stringers and skin. More, uh, some, of the, some of that was original uh, damage caused by crash landing. And as the rear fuselage is very light, dual aluminum structure, and it's actually easier to disassemble the plane like this if needed. We didn't start to make uh, any thorough structural repairs because that would have requ required uh, building new fuselage frames and the major reskinning. So that was deemed unnecessary in this case. And well, naturally, fuselage required some straightening. And shaped aluminium, L-shaped aluminium profiles were used uh, to replace uh, the missing stringers. And joining was made simply with with screws and nut, nuts and screws instead of rivets. So the fuselage joint is uh, strong enough uh, for static display, but <laughs> not much more. And well, a lot of detail work was done done with paint repair repairs. Uh, as you know, we didn't uh, we didn't want to completely repaint this plane, but rather to retain its uh, originality as much as possible. But then there were some some damage on the paint work ca caused by transportation and uh, improper handling, like this uh, damage on a wing leading edge caused by, by well when the plane was well tied up for transporting and the Tamiya acrylic paints were used uh, on on the camouflage painted areas and on areas where the plane was painted with only aluminium paint we used alkaline colors well, these are very common, common paint types with, with modelers. And a good point with Tamiya paint is that, is, is that these repairs can be easily removed with ethanol, if needed. And well, in these photos you see a typic, typical, typical patch, patchwork. And most of the painting was done. Well, with an airbrush, small Iwata, and some smaller scratches were painted with brush and certain weather, weathering techniques familiar to modelers were used to match these areas 
with overall appearance of battered and chipped paintwork. Uh, and with windscreen, we were a bit lucky because on recovery fo uh, photos, you can see when the plane was lifted on the uh, surface, you can see that the windscreen and original glazing is uh, still intact. But by the time the plane was uh, taken to the brought to the shore, at that uh, by that time, the windscreen was broken. Uh, and we didn't have many good conditioned Brewster parts existing in Finland when the project started. But luckily, Finnish Aviation Museum at Vanta had a complete windshield in their collection, and uh, this one was installed on BW 372. And this windscreen is a Finnish made part, uh, built possibly as a spare part for Brewster or, or for or for plant, plant cereal production of Humu fighter that was eventually cancelled. Uh, but nevertheless, this, wind, this, this particular part was has never been installed on a flying plane. And we knew, uh, and we, we were so sure, sure of that because many essential uh, screw and rivet holes were missing from, from this frame. Well, and that was typical for for this kind of metal parts that certain uh, bigger uh, holes are, are drilled uh, when the plane uh, part is produced, and the rest of the holes are drilled when on place when the part is actually installed. And well. Uh, there was not not much fabric surface remaining at the time when the plane arrived at the museum. Uh, on the on the photos taken in Russia in 1998, you can see that there's a, a much more fabric surface remaining. But uh, at, at at the time when when the plane arrived in Finland, only the left aileron had plus 50% of original fabric remaining. We don't know if this had something to do with the fact that this aileron was covered in mud and other control surfaces were directly in contact with water. While well, tail surfaces had also suffered damage by fire when the, because the plane was uh, burning at the time, time of landing. And we decided to preserve original fabric by making a support for it. The smaller fragments on, on other control surfaces were preserved too, but this was more like a exercise on different methods as these, these fragments didn't show any, uh, any important details that we wouldn't have no, known otherwise. And well, first step was to do a lot of cleaning and some corrosion removal. And original paintwork and anodization on the structure were still in pretty good condition. And these photos show some details that were naturally documented. On the right side photo, you can see a patched up bullet hole from an earlier plane's earlier combat history and a Finnish reinforcement piece on aileron hinge. And this uh, red section uh, of fabric was replaced in Finland at the time when, when this reinforcement part was made. And from Finnish modification bulletins, we could confirm that this was made to all, all Brewsters very pretty early as the Finns saw that uh, area of aileron hinge was, uh, wasn't strong enough for its purpose. And here the left aileron is ready for painting. Uh, the second it fabric was glued uh, on the aileron 
to support the original fabric, it was uh, completely covered with the uh, with second knit. And uh, because this was a static conservation work, we didn't uh, replicate the original rib tapes and stitching around the ribs or other covering methods uh, common with flying uh, flying plane. And the partial reason was to keep this area identifi identifiable. But the important factor was that with original style of rib tapes and stitches, it would have been more, much more difficult to glue the original fabric over the over the second it. And well, then there was some mosaic work as we also glued some, some certain remaining individual smaller fabric fragments to the aileron. And we primed this uh, uh, second it fabric with gesso and oil colors were used on painting uh, paint, painting these repaired and supported areas and original uh, painting is easily identifiable from and uh, repainted areas are easily repainted uh, recognized from original as you can see in these photos and here are some examples of those minor Minor repairs, uh, we used offset aluminium that were cut to correct shape and these were glued on the inner side of fabric pieces and these were then painted with oil, oil colors in an attempt to mimic fabric's texture. Uh, and right side tailwind is another part where we, we were again lucky. Original battle and crash landing damage is shown in these photos. And for some reason, the Americans had cut away the damaged part from a tail fin with possible intentions to rebuild it. And we consider this a bit strange uh, because, well, this part shows, <laughs> so, shows interesting points of, of the plane's history. And on the right, right side photo, you can see the left uh, right hand elevator and a point where the bullet entered right on the trim flap and through the leading edge of elevator and it, it had almost cut cut the right tail fin to half. And right side tail fin was another practically only larger use, useful component of uh, structural component of Brewster we had in uh, Finnish Air Force Museum storage. At that time, this plane was recovered from wreck site of BW 379 that was shot down by German anti aircraft fire during Lapland's war. And as can be seen, someone has tried to disassemble this fin, probably with an axe. And as he's, well, well, maybe he realized at some point that there's still a million rivets <sighs> remaining, so work was not finished. And well, after necessary cleaning and sheet metal work, we again used second it. As you can see here, second it fabric was glued over the, over the damage. And priming with gesso and oil oil colors were used again. And this was again a plastic modeler stream. It took <laughs> about one week to paint this paint this fin with oil colors and in, in this case we uh, replicated the original appearance of of the badly chipped and faded paint. And as we wanted to keep this uh, replaced part identifiable, we didn't uh, try to match this, match the color of tail fin with the rest of the camouflage and in this photo taken at the display, you, you can see right tail fin attached. If you know what you are looking, you can recognize it, but it's not very uh, uh, noticeable detail for general general public. 
And here it is. And then a few words about hurricane. Hurricane HC452 and from purely military historical uh, point of view, the hurricane is a marginal type for Finnish Air Force. On the 10 examples arrived in Finland during the, the late parts of winter, very late of winter war during March 1940. And I, if I remember correct, last, last planes arrived in April 1940. And last two remaining examples in flying condition were were retired in July 1943 due to lack of spare parts. And only five and a half aerial victories were scored with hurricanes in Finnish service compared with plus 450 with Brewster and plus 650 victories claimed by Finnish pilots in, with BF 109. But as a museum piece, this hurricane is one of the most valuable planes in our collection as it is the most original conditioned World War II fighter existing in Finland. Uh, it was built by Hawker in 1939. Fabrics, uh, fabric surface is original, made by Hawker. And it last went to major overhaul uh, to state aircraft factory during late 1942 when the plane was repainted and last modifications were made uh, in early 1943. And the tail fin, uh, sorry, the rudder is actually an interesting item because a uh, few months before this plane was removed from service, the rudder was replaced with another uh, with a part taken from another hu hurricane and it still displays the original Royal Air Force cover flood. So this is a combination of standard Finnish wartime, uh, wartime camouflage paint with Royal Air Force camouflage. And this was very, well, slightly different project when compared with Brewster as this plane was more or less was stored more or less in good condition. And for the first time it was put on display in late 1970s, never completely restored or conserved, but so rather some certain, uh, uh, cer certain repairs were made. And we began the conservation work in December 2010 and plan was put on display on March 2013 and last items were added in on November 2013. And the basic list of missing items was cockpit canopy glazing with a armored windshield, uh, cockpit instrumentation, instrumentation. Well, that's a very, <laughs> very vague. Uh, expression as as you know that it might mean almost everything but it <laughs> but a, a lot of equipment was missing practically every everything that could be easily removed and other equipment like radio oxygen system survival, survival kit tail wheel and landing and navigation lights and things like that and engine and exhaust pipes were also removed luckily we had the original propeller all the weapons were removed and certain surface panels like left wing, left wing joint panel were missing. And actually the wooden hats on the right side of the fuselage you can see in this picture under the cockpit is a replica part made, made earlier. And what we did again, disassembly and cleaning of structure and individual parts. And again, we made exception on bottom fuselage as this area still showed of marks of <laughs> operational use. And the cockpit equipment and other missing items were gathered and installed. Uh, well, and that was naturally very time consuming. 
port. Certain items were found from Finnish aviation museums, other were, others were obtained via individuals, and rest were obtained abroad by trading, and some, some minor items were also bought. And some smaller missing details were made at the museum, and some earlier replica parts like cockpit glazing was refabricated. And then there was naturally small repairs like patching up holes and fabric and some metal and wood, woodwork. And we also revealed uh, uh, the original swastikas underneath post war paint layers and new swastikas uh, in correct shade and dimensions were painted with oil colors. And a lot of cooperation was made with Philip Lo Mr. Philip Lawton. Uh, was living in Finland as, as he was building his flying hurricane Mark II at the same time. And when compared with Brewster, it can be said that this uh, uh, in a way this is a bit this, this was a bit easier project because it was possible to uh, found, found and even buy a lot of original items around the globe. Uh, and naturally the Brewster parts are much more rare as only 500 examples were built and operational use of Brewster was quite limited. And with Hurricane we had uh, better re reference material available, finished modification bulletins, parts and equipment lists, uh, indi uh, individual pa papers for this plane from military archives, original British spare part catalog and engine, certain engine handbooks. And a large number of drawings in digital format were obtained via Philip Lawton. And there we had naturally some, uh, a lot of original wartime photos and, and some post-war refer reference books were also, also useful. And well, in the case of Hurricane, the disassembly and the cleaning was uh, very time consuming. Time consuming work, uh, but luckily there was not much corrosion, corrosion damage as the play, as I said earlier, the plane was stored in dry conditions since World War II. But on the other hand, it was, well, very dirty. Here you see uh, on the right, Right side photo, you see you see the radiator cover and certain bottom panels removed. And in the case of Hurricane, we put even more uh, effort on finishing cockpit than with Brewster. And here we see the starting point. Most of the items were removed during war as they were recycled on other types. Some pi certain pieces have been stolen in post-war years, but otherwise it was in highly original condition. And as you can see, the paint, original British paint surface is, uh, is still there in good condition. And only non-original part you see in these parts is the blind flying panel on the mid, middle, in the middle of uh, main instrument panel. This was uh, uh, a replica part, not very accurate, and luckily we could replace this with an original as we had one, one in storage. Well, not a perfect photos, but you see something. Cockpit work in progress. And well, as is common in this kind of work, many missing items and other deficiencies were identified while the project lasted. Naturally, we made a missing parts list and things like that before we started to actual work, but, uh, but naturally a lot of, as we gathered more information and learned more about Hurricane, then we <laughs> knew, knew better how, what we were missing. And some interesting cockpit details. Emergency exit hats, it's typical for early hurricanes. And 
mailbox and new fabric pouches and this instruction play plates of uh, certain system diagrams had to be we had to make new as the originals were stolen and the pilot seat armor is a finished addition and it's as you can see it's very similar with armor armor plates used and brewster uh, and very similar also with plates used on Myrsky. And these were finished standard items that were uh, fitted to many planes with as little modifications as possible. But the seat belt, belt itself is an original British Sutton harness. And in this photo of armor plate, uh, notice the original wooden fitting parts between steel plate and aluminium seat. This is a very good example of, of hurry, uh, how the haste, how the how this work was done, when you consider the fact that uh, the bulletin to where installation of armor plates was issued in April 1940, if I remember correct, and uh, and. Uh, when the continuation was started in June 1941, every plane had 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 these plates fitted in in one way or another. And here we see the finished cockpit. We didn't have to replace uh, original material, and even the we could use. As this was a static conservation work again, we could even use the original electric wiring in many cases. And only larger missing item from cockpit is warning butter that was located on the left side of cockpit in front of throttle. Maybe uh, hopefully we we find find one somewhere someday. And swastikas. Uh, right after the war, the original swastikas were overpainted, and this was done even to non-operational planes like hurricanes and other hurricane and other historical planes that were stored at Vesibehma near Lahti. And when the plane was put on display in late 1970s, new swastikas were painted, but these were these were okay. But we wanted to make make them a bit more accurate. So we tried different methods on removing post war layers. Well, it was actually very tricky and time consuming work. We tried different solvents and even soda blast, but none of them. None, none of them was well, see, the magic solution. So eventually we had to do most of the work mechanically. And we removed old paint only enough to reveal original color and dimensions. And well, we applied a layer of masking fluid over original paintwork and new markings were painted with oil colors. And to be honest, I don't know how good method this was uh, considering the long longevity. Maybe some when someone uh, makes uh, the person who has to make <laughs> new swastikas at some time we will will be able to able to uh, <laughs> give ratings <laughs> to, to this method and the engine or uh, original engine like all the other useful or possibly even po possibly useful e equipment was uh, removed from from hurricane when the plane was removed from service and we obtained a new correct type Merlin 3 engine via Philip Lawton. Engine is missing crankshaft and cylinders and other interior parts, and it, it also has some corrosion damage. So it's not definitely not a, a pristine conditioned engine, but but better better than no engine at all. And the engine compartment is still missing some items like certain parts for for from hand starting mechanism. And well, exhaust pipes are again a nice detail. 
Replica exhausts were made by British company Gate Guardians. And again, model making skills were useful when, when these glass fiber parts were painted to look like real thing on, a, on an operational plane. This is actually a very rare type of exhaust pipe today, as most of the remaining hurricanes and Spitfires have this later. Later style of exhaust, so luckily Philip Lawton had one set of these earlier, earlier exhausts and the Gate Guardians could use these as a pattern for making fiberglass replicas. And well, Finnish additions, naturally the fin Finns modified uh, planes to suit their needs. And the following items were added or replaced by Finns. Pilot's armor and standard Finnish first aid kit, folding skis, flare pistol and launch tube in cockpit, Finnish fire extinguisher, and standard flying kit containing, containing certain spares and tools. And here I added uh, pics of uh, original folding skis. We restored a few sets of them. Uh, and we had to make new uh, first aid kit boxes. We made two at the same time. We put another one on Blenheim. And these were installed on rear fuselage. And it can, can be seen that the Finnish technicians received an order that OK, now you go and put these items to Hurricane and then they had to think where they <laughs> can actually fit it. And when I tried to remove this box and skis via the hats that it was originally meant uh, to be removed, I saw that, <laughs> well, it, it was tricky enough when the plane was on the floor of display hall and in the middle of for between the woods and stones in the forest after crash landing, I think it would have been, would have been even more difficult. And well, differences on approach with Brewster, we wanted to preserve a kind of time capsule condition. Naturally, it's a, it's a compromise. But, but still, of a plane at the moment, it was recovered from lake. And this included all the original battle and crash landing damage uh, the plane had suffered on its last flight. And on the other, other hand, with the hurricane, we wanted to create an accurate representation of the plane as it was during the last phase of its operational life. Naturally so that uh, all age and weathering and and dents and scratches are shown, but we wanted to uh, make make as complete equipment for it as possible. Okay, thank you.